folks, welcome back. Um, as you can see, there's been a little change of scenery. I don't think I've ever recorded in this room before, but now I have. And um, also you may notice the uh, light is a little moodier than usual. Number one, because it's kind of overcast outside. And number two, there's just a, a window right here and then nothing over here. You know, the natural light is really all I have to uh, light things nowadays. Actually, no, it was always like that. I don't have any lights. I would like some lights. If you want me to get some lights, you can donate to get them. Anyways, today's video. So, it's the end of 2019. People are compiling their best of lists for the year. And I thought I'd do one for movies. If you follow my new Twitter, which you most certainly should, I'll put it right here, you will have seen a screenshot of a Photoshop page of a tier list. And I thought, you know, tier lists surprisingly haven't gone out of fashion since like this summer. Um, I thought it would have been a, a passing fad, but I guess not. So I thought, why not do a tier list of all of the movies that I've seen this year. Now this year is pretty unique since I've been to the movies kind of a lot, whereas in previous years I'd only go maybe once or twice a year. And the reason for that is now that, number one, I have a car, and number two, I live in a, well, not really permanently, but I live in a bigger city for college, and there's a movie theater pretty close by in my hometown, which is where I am right now, because it's Christmas. The nearest movie theater, we have our own, but it's like a one screen theater, and it's not that good, especially like the audience experience and just overall like it, it's not a good theater is what I'm trying to say. And the nearest like actual theater is something like 30 minutes away and I don't really want to drive 30 minutes to go there. And I mean previously if I did want to go to a movie I have to bother my parents to take me there. But this year has not been the case. I have seen Let Me Count. Well two of these are actually streaming so i won't count those but one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven did i count that right yep i counted it right sorry math was not my strong suit i've seen 11 movies in the theaters which is kind of unprecedented so you know i thought we'll just go in order of the movies that i've seen this year and rank them let's just hop on over to the computer i don't need to hop anywhere because i'm already there <laughs> So we have a few categories. Usually with the tier list, you'll have S tier and then A through like F, I think. But I modified the tiers. So the highest would be Oscars, where you at? Because if this movie that I put in that tier, movies that I put in that tier, don't get an Oscar nomination, I'll be very upset. I already know that a couple on my list have been snubbed at the Golden Globes, which I haven't uh, actually looked into the nominations, but I've heard that and that does not make me happy at all. The next one is Almost Perfect, movies that are great, but they're just missing something that'll make them chef's kiss perfect. The next is Highly Enjoyable, you know, movie that I went to see, they were great, they were fine, I enjoyed them. And then Good, Good is just middle, middle of the road, just fine. The next one is Okay, which is just, you know, it's fine. There's nothing really to say about it. It's an okay movie. Ew would be movies that I generally didn't like, just didn't enjoy them. And then there's Fire Whoever Made This, which is the lowest on the tier list. Just right off the bat right now, I can already tell you that there won't be any movies that go in the ew or fire whoever made this category because I think like most people, I deliberately went to movies that I knew I might enjoy. So let's just get right into it. So for the first movie that I saw this year, it was Roma. Uh, it came out on Netflix after, you know, it swept at the Oscars. I thought maybe I should see this. And so I saw it. Um, let's see here. I thought it was fine. It was entirely in Spanish and another language that I forgot that I probably won't remember. I'll put it up here when I eventually look it up. So I had to like devote my entire attention to it, which is fine for a movie, I guess. Let's see, wh where would I put this movie? I thought, you know, did it deserve all those Oscars? But I'm not the best judge for like, whether or not a movie is good because like I said, um, I don't really like know what makes a good movie. I didn't say that before, but I'm saying it now. I don't really know what makes a good movie or not other than did I enjoy it? And nine times out of 10, if I watch something, I'm going to enjoy it. Like I don't think I've ever DNF'd a movie because it was bad. I do have an example for a show. 
I thought Tuca and Birdie, the show on Netflix made by, I think it's Tornate Productions, uh, same studio as Bojack Horseman. I didn't like it. It just, it just fell flat for me and people were so up in arms that I got canceled. I decided to give it a try to see, you know, did this deserve to get canceled? And I don't know, the writing just wasn't good. I mean, I did like the art style. The art style was fine for an animated show. I just didn't like it. It wasn't funny to me. It, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. And that it's not coming back for another season, I'm not really upset. Roma, <laughs> let's see, I'm gonna put this at I'll say it's good. I don't know about highly enjoyable. It wasn't like just okay. It was pretty good, but I it was just fine for me. So um, next was Us. Fun story about me going to see this movie. I wanted to see it with like a group of people and then one person canceled and that person was supposed to be my ride. I didn't have a, a car at this point and so I couldn't go. And so I wanted to see it again with someone who also had a car, they canceled, and I couldn't go see it. And so eventually I was thought, you know, forget this, I'm just gonna go on my own. I'm gonna eat the price of taking an Uber, not an Uber, because bad business practices, but a Lyft uh, back and forth to the theater, which ended up being around $30. But you know what, I think it was worth it. I will say that Us was highly enjoyable. I like the acting in it. It was pretty spooky. Um, I know a lot of people were complaining because, oh, they're expecting something like along the lines of quality of like Get Out, which I knew it wasn't gonna be another Get Out. I don't know why people expected that. Always lower your expectations when going to see something. It's just, it's just better that way. Oh, I forgot to mention. So there are two streaming entries on here. I did see a few movies on Netflix the summer, but I only put ones that I saw for the first time. There's only two that I've seen for the first time that's on here, because I just like to watch things over and over again, I guess. And also, I've stopped using Netflix a whole lot as of late, because their library is shrinking, and I don't enjoy that. You know, I just wanna see, I'm sure their originals are fine. Actually, I'm not sure of that. They're pretty hit or miss. I guess they never miss, huh? As far as I know, I just want more third party stuff. This is what I'm saying. Um, this next one that I saw this summer, Rocket Man. Oh my goodness, I adore this movie. I love it so much. I love the soundtrack. Mostly because, you know, it's just Elton John songs. There's this is good music. They're all bops. I just really like this movie so much. And it's such a nice story. You know, you always have these biopics that end on like a dour note. And this one didn't really, mostly because, you know, Elton John, number one, still alive. <laughs> And number two, he like turned his life around. So it's like, it's a nice story. Something that I can, you know, feel good about watching. Um, I did want to fight Rob Stark, who's in it. I forgot the actor's name, but it's Rob Stark. I like this movie. I am going to put it, ooh, do I want to put it in almost perfect or highly enjoyable? I don't know. I think, oh man, I don't, is there like a middle ground? I don't know. It's going in almost perfect. It's an almost perfect film. So, next one was Late Night. Um, I saw a trailer for it before Rocket Man, I think. I can't remember. I saw a trailer for it before seeing some other movie. I saw a trailer for it. I thought, oh, this will be a fun movie. Um, I went to see it. I actually liked it a lot. I thought it would just be, you know, like, okay. But it ended up being a great movie. You know, very inspiring for someone like me who is um, aspiring to be in the film and maybe TV industry. So yeah, I'll put that at highly enjoyable for a late night. Next is Midsummer. Oh my goodness, I think Midsummer is my movie of the year. I'm not even lying. I love that movie so much. I am not usually a horror person, but I saw this movie. I don't even know what prompted me to see it. I think it was getting decent reviews and I thought, okay, fine, I'll give it a chance. I don't usually do horror. I went to see it on my own and I saw it and oh my goodness, it, I, I don't, I never like disliked horror movies. The only kind of horror movies that I disliked were like the cheap ones with dumb jump scares and stuff like that. I don't like those kind of horror movies, but A Midsummer, I, it, I adore that movie. This one's going straight to the top. Oscars, where are you at? This was one of the movies, actually, I think. This and Us, that got snubbed during the Golden Globes nominations. And if this does not get something for, like, the Oscars, I'm gonna be so upset. So, so upset. I know horror 
usually doesn't do very well at um, award shows and stuff, but I really hope this like turns the tides. Ah oh, man. So, um, I love that movie so much, I can't, <laughs> I can't stop thinking about it. If you would have followed me on my old Twitter that we no longer talk about, um, I constantly retweet any Midsummer fan art that I see, which I'm still seeing it, which is unsurprising because it's a good movie. I was considering going as a May Queen for like Halloween, but it didn't end up panning out because, you know, I would have had to buy and or craft something and I don't have the energy. So that didn't happen. Oops. Um, let's see, next was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I was stoked for this movie. I think I saw a trailer for it before like every single movie on this list except for Roma because I was on Netflix. I saw like, they were playing that trailer before literally every movie. And I thought, okay, I like Quentin Tarantino. My film teacher has some opinions about it, but I, I like it, I enjoy his movies. And I really like this one. I, you know, the whole alternate history thing, I really like that. And I especially enjoyed the ending. Oh, an anecdote about that. I saw this opening night, which is on a Thursday, and the theater was packed, number one. And I was sitting next to this guy who was to my left. He, well, number one, he's kind of smelly, which upsetting. But <laughs> number two, um, if you've seen the movie, I will try not to spoil it because I really want you to see this movie if you're into it. But if you've seen the movie, there is a scene near the climax where Brad Pitt's character beats a bunch of people up. Um, and this guy started laughing and just, he was howling throughout that entire scene, which is pretty gruesome if you've seen the movie. And that was strange. Um, person, if you're watching this, it's not too late to change your ways. Anyways, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I'm gonna put that as almost perfect. It was, it's a great movie. I love it. The next one that I saw uh, during the summer was Monty Python and the Holy Grail, which I saw on Netflix for the first time. Now, the weird thing about this is like, you know, there's a whole lot of um, like references from this movie that I was already aware of. And like, I was quoting things throughout the movie that like I already knew, but I had never seen the movie. Either way, it's a really fun movie. I like it. It was, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put that as just okay. Some Monty Python stands out there are gonna crucify me for this, but you know, I like the humor. It's not, to me, really not anything that's spectacular though. I know that's, you know, it's Monty Python, the great British humor, but oh God, what was that accent? <laughs> um, but it just, it was just okay for me, you know? Um, next up was The Kitchen. I had seen this trailer, I believe, before a movie. Don't remember which one. Probably Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I saw a trailer, I thought, okay, this looks interesting. I think I might see this. So I went and saw it, and I ended up loving it. Um, I didn't know it was based on a DC comic. I don't know if I want to read it or not. I've never usually been a comics or like graphic novels type person. I usually stick to like print books. But, I don't know, I might give it a chance after this. I really like the story, you know, female empowerment. As you can see, I was kind of on a pe uh, female empowerment binge throughout this entire year for movies, kind of. The Kitchen, I'll put this as highly enjoyable because I really liked it, you know? Would I see it a second time? I don't know. I don't know if I'd see any of these movies a second time. Actually, that's a straight up lie. I would see once Upon a Time in Hollywood again in theaters. Um, I would see, maybe not us, it was just okay. I'd see Rocky Man again in theaters because of the, like the sound, the sonic experiment, experiment, experience for all of the music, I like that. Would definitely see Midsummer again in theaters. Like, it's, I love it so much. I can't state how much I love that movie. Um, let's see, next up, um, at around the beginning of the semester, I saw my neighbor uh, Totoro for the first time. Other than Spirited Away, because I remember a while ago, Spirited Away came on Cartoon Network when I was a child and I saw it. Um, I can't really remember anything about it because it was a long time ago. But um, other than that, I, oh, and Ponyo. I'd seen Ponyo because it came on TV once. But other than those two, I've never really seen any um, Studio Ghibli films. And they were having like a Studio Ghibli fest this summer and at the beginning of the semester. 
So I went to see that with a friend. We saw the subtitled version because I think the dub version was on a Tuesday and we had a night class, which meant we couldn't see it. So we went to see the subtitled version. I thought it was okay. Not really, I don't wanna say I'm not a fan of animated things or anime because I do kind of like anime. Like I'm not really that big into it. it it's, a, it's a nice, it's a nice, fun, wholesome kids movie. You know, and I think that's really all it needs to be. So I'm gonna put it in, okay. This is just okay. Next up is The Goldfinch. Now, this one was also a trailer that I'd seen before pretty much every movie on this list. They ran that trailer a lot. And that trailer was spectacular. Like, oh my goodness, just visually, especially the shot with the, um, the museum like exploding. Um, I don't wanna say spoilers, cause it's, in the, it's literally in the trailer, but the shot with the museum exploding like in slow motion, I adore that shot. Obviously, well not obviously, it wasn't that obvious, but the trailer was pretty different from the movie. I mean, obviously, you know, it's a two minute trailer versus a two hour movie. I think that one was two hours. So, you know, they're going to be different. But, you know, just, it's not like I thought it was gonna go one way and it went another way, like, to like how some trailers do it. I still thought the film was enjoyable. I don't know why I'm making out to making it sound like it's not enjoyable. I liked it. I liked it a lot. It's based on a book of the same name. I would like to read it, but I think it's like close to 700 pages, so that's not happening. Not 2019, not in 2020, probably not in 2021. Uh, I might listen to an audiobook if there is one available, um, but as far as the book goes, I, I'm not reading it. It's too long. It's just too long. And I would like to know what differed between the book and the movie. I do know of a YouTuber um, named Dominic Noble who does the series called Lost in Adaptation where he compares the book version to the movie version, and I really hope he does a, an episode on the Goldfinch. It would be nice if you're watching Dominic Noble. That's my recommendation. <laughs> but um, this movie, I liked it a lot. Um, as far as why I liked it, visually, it was nice. Like it had some shots that were great. Like all the visually stunning shots they put in the trailer, like <laughs> that's the entire trailer. It was just all the shots that were like good visually. And this isn't really a movie that draws you in with visuals. It's, it's very story focused because it is based on a book. So I think the story was what got me rather than the visuals. It's nice visuals um the acting is fine but the story is really what got you so this one is going highly enjoyable joker so this movie was pretty controversial that time it came out still is actually a couple of my friends convinced me to see it opening night i didn't really have any opinions going in um which was good because i ended up enjoying it i mean I like how it, oh, is this spoilers? I think this might be spoilers. Spoilers ahead. Sorry about that. The UPS man just came here. It's the Christmas season and the gifts are coming in. Not really a comic movie fan, you know, that's not my thing. I know it's like huge now, this whole genre we got going here, but I'm just not enthused about it. You know, it exists, make a lot of money, that's cool but I don't know, I don't usually partake in them. The last comic book movie I saw was The Kitchen. However, I didn't know that was based on a comic. And also, I'm more so talking about like superhero movies. Um, the last one I saw was Avengers Infinity War, which again, my friends convinced me to watch. And I thought it was nice, you know? I wasn't like invested in it, but I liked it. Um, same here, I wasn't really invested in it, but I did like it. Um, I thought it was good, you know, it's not, normally my brand of film to watch but it was nice i didn't get shot by an incel which is great i don't know why they're well no i still don't know why they're comparing like the joker in this movie to incels it was way more we live in a society than incels which I, we all know that now the memes are out it's just it's a good movie i'm gonna put it in the good category because it was just good you know People are gonna be salty that I put it there, but I don't care. Um, next up, these last two movies I saw, I'm gonna say, let's see, 
maybe October, November, something like that. I'm pretty confident I'm not going to be seeing any more movies this year, which is why I'm doing this tier list. Um, if I do see any more movies, I'm not going to be updating this video because that's a lot of work. So, the last, or next to last, the penultimate movie of this year was The Lighthouse. I believe I saw a trailer for it before a movie. It was on my list of movies that I wanted to see, so I'd known about it for a while. And so me and a group of friends went to see it in theaters. A couple things about it that I did like. Um, visually, it's interesting, you know. Um, I want to say there weren't a lot of black and white movies this year, but that's probably false. I mean, other than Roma was completely in black and white, and so was this. And I believe it was shot on like 35 millimeter film or something like that. I don't know the exact specs, but it wasn't 4-3 aspect ratio, which is a little strange since I'm used to, you know, widescreen movies. I thought that was nice. I thought the acting was great. I thought, okay, for a horror movie, ooh, this one might be second to like Midsummer. I did like this one a lot. And now I'm wondering where to place it because for a horror movie, it was great. There's a lot of good horror. That foghorn sound. Oh my goodness, like, it's a good sound. I don't really know why I like it so much because it's literally just a foghorn, but it's like a good foghorn, you know? It's like, it, it resonates, it's like, ooh. You know, <laughs> I thought it was good horror. And the ending, oh my goodness. Like, I do like horror visuals, you know, stuff that I guess stays with you after you watch it. I used to be really like afraid of basically everything when I was a kid. If I saw this when I was a child, I'd probably be a little traumatized. Also, not a movie you take a kid to see. If you have seen The Lighthouse, don't take your kid to it. What are you doing? Jeez. This is a highly enjoyable film. However, I think, I think this one might go in almost perfect. I don't know what would make it perfect, but it was just, it was fantastic. I love the movie, you know? Man, I love that movie so much. I would go see it again in theaters just to see like stuff that I might have, um, I guess, missed in my first viewing. Yeah, that's my placement for it. So, last one of the year that I saw with, who did I see this with? I saw it with friends, I didn't see it alone. Yeah, I think last three movies this year I saw with people. My camera overheated, so I'm gonna try to keep this quick. The last movie of the year that I saw was Knives Out. Um, again, like most of the movies I've seen this year, I only saw them because I saw a trailer before another movie that made me wanna see that movie, which, you know, I guess trailers really do work, huh? Um, other than that, um, just in general, I don't tend to watch trailers for movies that I intend on seeing unless that trailer is what made me want to see that movie, if that makes sense. So, Knives Out was the last one I saw this year. Saw it sometime in November, forgot, uh, with a group of friends. One friend that I was with didn't like it because they were, I guess, I don't know, so the trailer, okay, a thing about the trailer, it makes it seem like it's a more, you know, um, traditional whodunit type movie, you know, an Agatha Christie type of film, which is fine. I, again, like most of these movies, I went in with very low expectations. I thought it was going to see an enjoyable film and I was enjoyed. I enjoyed the film, not I was enjoyed by the film, that's weird. I enjoyed it, you know, I thought it was good, I didn't really care that much that it wasn't, you know, a thrilling whodunit because you figure out who did it pretty early on. That's like a big plot point, you know, but I thought it was fine for what it was. You know, I had no problems with it. It was a good movie. It was enjoyable. I don't know about highly enjoyable. Like, I don't know if I'd put it up there with, say, The Goldfinch. Actually, I would. I actually would put it up there with those. So yes, that's where I'm putting it. I'm putting it in highly enjoyable because it was highly enjoyable. It was a good movie. Would I see it again? No, not really. One time was enough for me. You know, it wasn't, I'm not gonna say it wasn't that good of a film because that's a lie. It was that good of a film, but it was just okay. You know, it was just fine. So 
that's my tier list for this year. Um, hopefully I'll see more movies next year. Um, it's not exactly good for my wallet, especially when I have no income, but <laughs> I would like to see more movies in theaters this year because the theater experience versus, you know, just seeing it on some bootleg website, it's different. You know, the sound quality, the picture quality, um, I don't want to sound like a snob, but I would much rather see things in theaters like all of these and like every other movie on my list that I wasn't able to see this year. I could very easily, you know, hop on a 123 movies or equivalent site and watch it no problem, but I just, I'd rather see it in theaters, you know? I guess I am turning into a film snob. Gosh, what is film school doing to me? But. Um, I guess that's my opinion on that. Anyways, that's my opinion on the movies I saw this year. Obviously, I haven't seen like every movie this year. Maybe there were some movies that came out that were blow all of these movies out of the water. Maybe I would have seen some movies that have actually entered into the ew and fire whoever made this category. Who knows? I just, I didn't see every movie this year. I didn't see, I didn't even see every movie I wanted to see this year. I would have liked to see, to have seen every movie that I wanted to this year. But there are still some on my list that are coming out this year that I just know I just am not going to go see because of money reasons and because of now that I'm here and the nearest theater being 30 minutes away reasons. So I mean, hopefully once the semester starts up again, I can see some fantastic movies, uh, either alone or with my friends. Um, I don't know which one I prefer. I don't really have an opinion on seeing movies alone versus with people. Outro time. So, I have a new Twitter. You should follow it, please. I would like some followers on that Twitter. Thanks. If you want to donate so I can get proper lighting so that one half of my face won't be dark, um, do that. Oh, I made another tier list. It wasn't about movies, but it was about Animal Crossing. And if you want to see it, you can see it. It'll be up. Wait, will it be up in that corner? Or will it be up in this corner? It'll be in a corner. <laughs> I'm going to try to make more videos. Hopefully in the coming days, the sun is actually going to be out so we can get some decent lighting. This half of my face is still going to be dark. Who cares? I mean, we all like a nice, you know, two to one ratio. Mm, cinematography, <laughs> where <are> you at? <laughs> Anyways, that's it for this video. Uh, watch my other videos. Subscribe. Oh, I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers because I want a custom link. I'm tired of my busted link that I have. I want a nice link. And to do that, I need 100 subscribers. So, I usually don't set subscriber goals, mainly because one, I don't upload that um, often, and two, I don't really have a reason to. But now I do have a reason to. I need 100 subscribers. I need a custom link. Please, I need this. Do this for me. If for no other reason, do it because I asked you to and I'm maybe a nice person. That's it for this video. Don't know when the next one will be. Don't ask me because I don't know. 